Hey everybody, welcome to another video about the Lord of the Rings LCG. My name is Ryan, and today I'm going to be playing some Steward's Fear for you. This is Elrond's orders for this week. Um, I'm going to play this solo because, unfortunately, B Gamer Joe is away at Gen Con. Lucky him. So, I think he's on a flight right now. So, hey Joseph, when you watch this video, which I'm sure you'll do first thing in the morning, right? Uh, I'm going to play Steward's Fear on normal mode. And... Um, one thing I would like some feedback on for this video is whether or not you like the music because I've put some music on in the background because there is some noise going on outside my apartment. I've no idea why there's all this banging going on at 8pm on a Friday night. But it is what it is, so I'm going to play some music underneath my voice and just to kind of test things out. So let's see how that is and please give me some feedback. Okay, so Stuart's Fear is the first adventure pack from the Against the Shadow Cycle. This is one of the, I would say, better liked quests in the game. Um, it's not easy, I have to say. You need a good deck to beat it. I think the reason people like it is because there's a lot of variety. It's got a lot of replay value. Um, you've got these three plots. Um, you have a different plot each game and the three boss villains and you have a different one of those every game too. Um, other than that, it's a pretty um, kind of a taxi from all angles type quest. I've got the underworld deck there, and the first thing you need to do is select the plot and the villain that you're going to have for that game. So I'm going to play my starter for Dale deck against this uh, because I have not played a solo game for ages, and I think this is the best solo deck I've made recently, and also because this is a good all-round deck so I'm gonna take it up against Steward's Fear normal mode and then I'll do a run of nightmare mode afterwards uh, I would say I don't think I've lost this on normal mode I think I've probably lost it maybe 60 to 80 percent of the time on nightmare though so there's a massive leap in difficulty between the two um, so this Dale deck I've got Berevor, Bard Son of Brand and Brand Son of Bane pretty standard Dale Lineup and looking at my opening hand, I think I'm going to mulligan here. This guy is really nice to have um, in this quest, the North Realm Lookout. But I think what I want to find is Hennemarth River Song um, and King of Dale. So let's see what we get here. Okay, mm, not a great starting hand. Two Gandalfs is a bit slow. Uh, I have a map of Rivanian though, that's really good in this quest. Um, it doesn't really matter anyway because I've got so much draw from Berevor and Brand Son of Bane that we'll be able to get. The things you need pretty quickly. All right, so let's do the setups. Uh, create the underworld deck. Remove mo that. remove roots of Mindoluin from the encounter deck and set it aside outside of play. Shuffle all villain cards and randomly set one aside out of play without looking at it. So um, I'm actually going to do that with the plots first because you reveal the plot first. So I'm going to put that one there and then pull those out of there, and then we do it with the villains. So we take those, put them in the special deck, shuffle, and there's our villain for this game. And I'll just put those there and hide them. And there's the underworld deck, which I'm gonna give a little shuffle, just to make sure that's done. So when revealed, search the encounter deck for the fourth star and make it the active location, shuffle the encounter deck. Forced after the active location leaves players an explored location, place one resource token on this quest. And if there are four or more resource tokens on Conspiracy, which is the quest card, advance to the next stage. So we need to uh, add this fourth star as the active location. So it's a five progress location. Underworld X, where X is the number of players in the game. So what that means is we take this card, place it underneath it. And when the fourth star leaves players an explore location, each player may draw one card. So I don't want to explore that yet because it's got a card under there that could be an enemy. This is where all the enemies are mostly in this quest. So I'm just going to leave it active for as long as possible while I build up my board, especially because I have quite a bad starting hand here. So let's start the first turn. Right, I'm going to draw two cards with Barrowhorn first of all. Okay, I've got my King of Dale. And I could actually get that down on turn one if I wanted to here. But the thing is that I don't really have a good ally to play. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this map onto Bard, son of Brand, with Barrowhorn's resource. Now let me draw a card from Brand. Okay, Sneak Attack Gandalf is now an option, which is good. Um, I will probably play this Hallberk here, because I'm going to quest with Bard, and he'll chip the active location for one. And then I'll probably keep Bran back as a defender. The other option, I suppose, is I could Sneak Attack Gandalf if an enemy does come out. Um, but I like the idea of using uh, Brand 
as a defender. So I'm going to play this Hallberg here and I'll draw a card. Okay, North Realm lookout. So now actually, uh, this actually looks kind of attractive to me to play that down, but I think I'm going to wait a turn just because um, I can barter this map off next turn and then give it to the North Realm lookout, which will give me a three willpower quester. So I'll quest for three here and I'll use this map to place a progress on the active location. Reveal a card. Houses of the Dead, four threat. So I quested for three. So I'm going to go up by one and it's Underworld two. So I get two cards and put it underneath that location. So fiddly this on Octagon. Sorry about this. Okay, done. And then no combat, so I'll refresh and go to the next turn. Okay, traffic from Dale. I'll draw two with Berivor. Just keep drawing. Right, I want to get down this King of Dale, I think. So I can either pay for it or I can barter something. I think what I'll do is I'll just pay for it here. So I'll pay two for that. I'll use it to play North Realm Lookout for free. And then I'll use bartering to return the map of Rivanian to my hand. And that lowers the cost of the next attachment I play by one. So I will play that map onto the North Realm Lookout and I'll draw a card. Test of will, that's nice to have. Um, I'm going to keep Sneak Attack Gandalf as an option here, I think. And I will quest for, I think this usually adds between two to four. I'll quest for six, though, with this guy and Bard Son of Brand. And I'll trigger the map and put a progress on the active location. Reveal a card. Okay, Underworld Dissident, so seven, so I go up by one threat again. <laughs> Uh, he will engage. Show a card for him. I'll defend with Brand Son of Bane. He gets plus one attack for each underworld location in play. So there's one in the staging area, so he's three attack. I'm defending for three. Second enemy gets plus two. Okay, so he will hit Brand for two. I'm going to let that go. And then I cannot do any damage to him. Probably should have played the Bow of You uh, just so I could chip him for one. Um, but we'll play it next turn, it's fine. Okay, Holbrook of Mail, I'll draw two. Another North Realm lookout, that's good. I'm gonna play this, I'm gonna play the map, I think, onto Bard. I'll use Berivor's resource for that, and I'll use King of Dale. I'll get down this North Realm lookout for free, and I'll attach the bow of you to him. Let me draw a card. Now I have another three willpower quester. Um, now I could draw, I can get a bunch of money here which might be useful because my threat's been going up quite a lot. Um, the other option is I just hold on to what I've got. I've got double sneak attack Gandalf, that's really good. I have a resource for test of will, so I probably don't need to do any of that stuff. So I'll quest for one, two, three, four, five, six. Use the map to chip that for one. And I'll probably go, I'll probably go nine here. And if I need to get another defender, I'll sneak attack Gandalf. So nine against four and market square, so that's a three. So we make two progress. Is enough to clear the fourth star. And we draw a card, and this one is revealed. Pickpocket man, that guy's annoying. We get a progress uh, or a resource there, sorry. Now then, each player must spend one resource from one of his hero's resource pools to travel here. Uh, or that one where it exhausts all characters. How about no, I'm not going there. So I'm going to go there and I will spend a resource from probably probably Bard because I'm going to play Steward of Gondor on him next turn. So I'll spend his resource and Pickpocket's going to engage. 28, 25. Um, I think I'm probably going to sneak attack Gandalf just to clean these enemies up. So I'll sneak attack him kill the pickpocket I think because I don't want that forced effect to go off and then I have to defend the underworld dissident I might as well do that with Gandalf because I can kill him with my other allies uh, that's not going to do anything I'll do one hit him for one direct damage two three four five so he's dead nice all cleaned up and end of round okay I will probably play I want to get that guy down because he's awesome so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a traffic from Dale and I'll spend one and I'll gain four resources on Brand. And I'll spend two of those on Steward of Gondor, which goes on to Bard. I'll draw two. Okay, and then I'll use King of Dale, play my Redwater Sentry. 
And I'll play the Holberg on him, which is free. So draw a card. Another Gandalf. Uh, what would I want to find here? I think I would probably like to find the attacking ally, but I couldn't play him this turn anyway. I'm just thinking about if I want to play any more cards. I have Test of Will available. Bartering could get me another card draw. I think I can afford to wait, though. Uh, so I'm up against four in staging. Because for six, I'll go nine. And I'll, I can't hit that active location because it's a means player card effect. So we're definitely going to clear this, I think. Okay, another one of those. So it's a seven, so we get two progress. One, two, it's wasted. Goes up by one, goes away. I will travel there again. And I'll spend Bard's resource. No combat, so refresh. Okay, so I think we've got this pretty much under control now. What I really want to find, I think, is Will of the West. That's a useful card. And Shadow Cancellation. Because Shadow Cancellation will allow me to cancel the shadow that discards your hand, which is really, really horrible. Uh, now, the thing about this quest is there's an enemy that does one damage to all of your characters. And that means sometimes I like to hold off on playing these allies unnecessarily. So I'm probably not going to play this Redwater Sentry. Um, I think I'll play this guy, just to get another body out there, and because I can move attachments around with him. And I think I'll move this map. Uh, actually, no, I'll leave it on Bard, actually. I'll leave that there. Uh, that looks fine to me. So he's going to come back. I think I'll play Calibrian Stone. And I'm going to play that onto Bard. Uh, so, so he can quest for five. I think, you know what, I will move that map because now he's got three attachments anyway. Okay, now then we're up against four. I'll quest for nine again, I think I could probably do. Well, I could do five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, so there's nothing that can stop that. Okay, when revealed return all brigand enemies engage with players to the staging area. If this effect return no brigand enemies to the staging area, lurking in shadows gain surge, sure. Underworld dissidents are three, so we're gonna get five progress. One, two, three, four, five. So we get a resource there. So one more resource needed. Um, I would be willing to travel there if I didn't have to exhaust all of my characters to do it. If I could keep one ready, uh, I would go. But I think I'm just going to leave it in the staging area. Engage this guy. Shadow card. I will defend with Brand. He's defending for three. This guy is attacking for three because there's one underworld. Uh, plus one attack, so he's hitting for four. So I need to discard a card to keep Brand alive. I'll discard King of Dale, so he gets plus one defense. So he's defending for four. And he's attacking for four, no damage. There's only one, two, three, four, and he's dead. In fact, I should have defended with him. I don't know why I didn't. <laughs> Forgot he was on the table, I guess. Okay, new turn. Draw two. So my deck is starting to thin down a bit now, um, which could be a problem if I get the plot that... Um, means you lose if you have an empty deck. Uh, but thankfully I've got Will of the West, so I'm going to play Galadrim's Greeting to lower my threat by 6. That early threat raise wasn't really an issue. Um, I don't think I want to play anything else. I guess I could play a map, but really that's for the questing ally, so I'll just quest for 6, I think. Uh, maybe 11 again, just to be safe. Real card. Okay, and the quest phase without resolving the quest. I really don't care about that card at all. It's fine, I don't need it. Um, but I will travel there now because it's safe to do so. Uh, so we have to exhaust all characters, but I'll just go to the next turn. It's fine. Okay, so I've drawn on the North Realm Lookout. I have a bow of view. I have so many options. I'm going to play this bow of view onto him uh, just so I have another attacker. And I'll play this bow of view onto this guy. Draw a card. Traffic from Dale. Um, I won't do anything else. I'll just quest for three. Four, five, six with those two. And that will let me hit the active location for two. Reveal a card. Three. Okay, when reveal, place the top card of the Underworld deck face down underneath the active location, if able. And that's Underworld one itself. So that's going to be a disgusting location now when that pops up. And we're going to get one under there. Bit of challenge. Kind of crushing it at the moment. So that added three. So I get three progress, one, two, three, which means this is explored and we place a resource token there. Uh, I'll just flip these over now. Okay, that's bad. <laughs> the Umbar Assassin, he's the bad one. A prisoner, useful clue, really, that's the best clue, I think. And Zealous Traitor, that guy's not nice either because he's the one that deals one damage to all of your allies. 
Um, then we go to the next quest stage. When revealed, reveal the set aside plot card and add it to the staging area. So it's the Up in Flames one. Force at the end of the round, place one resource token on Up in Flames and discard the top X cards of each player's deck. X is the number of resource tokens on Up in Flames. So that's the one uh, that will make you lose if you're decked. But thankfully I've got Will of the West. So it's all good. Okay, let me flip it. Uh, when revealed, make Roots of Mindoluin the active location, returning any other active location to the staging area. It's got the same forced effect. We just need to place four resource tokens on it. Uh, so that's an Underworld 1 as well. So many Underworld cards coming out. Okay, what do we do now? Right, I can't travel there. Um, I could claim this objective to place one, two resource tokens on the current quest, but I don't need to right now. Uh, the other thing is this Zealous Traitor. Um, I need to optionally engage him, which means I have to leave the Umbar Assassin up there for a turn. So I'll optionally engage him. I need to deal one damage to each of my allies. One, two, three, four. And then I've got Archery 2 from this Umbar Assassin. So I'm going to put that on Bard, Son of Brand. Because I have to engage that guy, really. And he's going to deal three damage to Berevor. So Shadow Card for this guy. I'll defend with my Sentry. Nothing. And then I can do one, two, three. And I'll do three direct damage. Yeah, he's, he's well and truly really dead. <laughs> Okay, so end of the round, place one resource token on up in flames, I think. I think I could grab that now and put two resource tokens on the current quest. I don't see any reason not to since I've got ready heroes. Uh, so I'll do that now. And then I'll place a resource there. Discard top card of my deck and then refresh. So what I need to do now, I think, is play some um, hit points so that I have some archery soaking. Uh, so I'm going to draw two with Berevor. What I want to find is the um, Hallwork. Didn't find it though. Uh, I will give Unexpected Courage to Brand so that he can ready up and attack. And I'll probably, I'll probably do this. And I'll play this guy just as Archery Soaking. And I'll probably play the Long Lake Trader as well. And I'll give him a map of Rovanian just so I can draw a card. Maybe I'll get Hoburk. Nope, didn't get it. I'm going to use Bartering. Uh, so I'll return that to my hand and just replay it so I can draw a card. Okay, traffic from Dale. So much cash. Uh, it's insane. Maybe I should play Gandalf. I might just play Gandalf here and uh, soak the archer up on that. So let's do that. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Play him. And I will deal four damage to that guy. Okay, quest phase. We're up against four, five, six, seven. That's quite a lot all of a sudden. So I'll do three, four, five, six, and hit the active for two. Seven, eight, hit the active for another one. Thirteen, seems good enough to me. Reveal a card. Okay, that's going to gain surge. All right, local trouble. When revealed, attach this card to the hero with the highest threat cost without a copy of local trouble attached. Counts the condition attachment with the text. When attached hero readies, uh, exhausts or triggers an ability, raises its controller's threat by one. I think I am going to let that go, believe it or not. I'm going to put it on Berevor. Just because I'm so close to the end of the game now anyway, I don't really care. And I'd rather keep my tester wheels for things that are actually going to end the game. Uh, and plus it added no threat, so I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six. Which gets rid of Roots of Mindoluin. And we get a Lostanac Bandit for our trouble. All right, and that's going to put a progress, or rather a resource there, and I'll travel to that one. Okay, um, I'm going to engage this guy optionally, which means he will come down, and that means I lose two resources from each of my hero's resource pools, which is kind of a bummer, but whatever. Shadow cards. Now, this guy needs some defense, so I will defend him with Gandalf, and I have archery two as well, one, two, and I've got that brutal shadow effect there. So Gandalf takes the damage, Hasty Stroke, cancel that one. Best believe I'm cancelling that one. Defending player discards his hand, that's disgusting. Um, now I'm going to defend this one. Attacking enemy gets plus two, so he's hitting for five. So he takes the damage. And then all I need to do to kill this guy is just go in for one and use the bow of you. So he dies, thankfully. Oh, and I should have done three damage to Berevor. And I've got one, two, three, four, five with two direct damage, so he's dead as well. Okay, and that is the end of the round. I place one resource there, and I discard top two cards of my deck. Henarth, Riversong, and Faramir. That's pretty bad. 
And then I'll raise my threat by one for the local trouble on Beravor. Gandalf leaves play too. Okay, let's have a look here. I'm going to gain a lot of money on Bard Son of Brand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I think I'll gain. And I'll play the Galadrim's Greeting. Go down by six. And to be honest, there's not a lot else to do at this point. I'll just sit here and wait. Um, so I'll quest for six, eleven. And I hit the active for two. And I think that's probably enough, considering that I have an empty staging area. So I'll reveal a card. City Street is Surge. And the Storehouse is Underworld 1. Okay, so that added four. So it makes seven progress. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever. Get rid of that one. Flip this. Okay, another clue. Secret map. Exhaust the hero to claim this objective and attach it to that hero. If attached to a hero, add secret map to the victory display to place three progress tokens on the active location. I like it. Uh, but we get that final resource, and so now we go to the last quest stage. When revealed, reveal the set aside villain card and add it to the staging area. Here we go. Let's see who we get. Telemnar's Bane. Okay, he combos with the plot, so that's bad. Uh, when Telemnar's Bane attacks, discard the top three cards of each player's deck. And we flip this. When revealed, shuffle the Underworld deck into the Encounter deck, so there's not much left in there, really. Does mean there's a lot of enemies in those 14 cards, though, probably. Players cannot defeat the stage while a villain is in play. If the stage is defeated, the players have won the game. Okay. So we have to travel to City Street because of that passive effect on it. We engage Telemnar's Bane, and he gets a show card. Now then, I'm thinking here, um, if I play any events like Sneak Attack, he will discard six cards, which is not good because I'll lose. So I'm just going to defend him and see what shadow effect he gets at this point. In fact, actually, if he gets the hand discard in shadow effect, I'm going to lose the game. So I think I will... Um, trigger this Protector of Lorium when I don't actually need to, just to discard a couple of cards. I'm going to discard one, two, three, and then I'll play Will of the West here, just in case he does discard my hand. So shuffle all of these into my deck. Okay, let, and now I'll defend it. Okay, no shadow effects, that's fine. Uh, but we have to discard the top three cards of the deck when he attacks. Hanamarth again. Um, and he would have made an immediate attack after I played Will of the West too, so he actually is going to make a second attack now. Uh, so I think what we'll do is we will do the Red Water Sentry for this one. And discard another three. One, two, three. Let's have a look at this. Okay, a clue. That's good. He's going to take a wound. Now then, can I kill the guy? That's the question. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and three direct damage is enough because I'll get five damage one two three four five so he's dead good now all I need to do is quest through that so let's see if we can do it end of the round place one there discard top three one two three this is getting a bit close here we go okay steward I think I'll probably use the two threat on Berivore this turn um, to get through this uh, what I might do is get rid of the active location with the secret map so I may as well pay that one threat to claim that and then I'll use its ability so add it to the victory display to place three progress tokens on the active location clears the city street now then I have got two in there so I wonder if I can quest through I'd need 17 so we get 5, 6, 7, 8 9, 10, 11 14 15, 16 17, 18 and I think if I sneak attack Gandalf, we would get four more. One, two, three, four. And I think there I'll probably lower my threat by five because I don't want to draw any more cards, really. Let's see what we get. Okay, Zealous Traitor for two. So I believe we're going to make 18 progress here. So we just flat out win the game. That was good. I enjoyed that. Um, I don't find that particularly difficult on normal mode, really, playing this deck. This deck can really handle it quite well, and I even was able to afford to 
let a local trouble go off, which is something that you just never really want to do at all. Um, so let's reset and see if we can do a nightmare run. So let's do that. It's a bit fiddly to set up this quest. I guess that's the one sort of uh, X against it. Is it's a bit tricky to set up on Octagon. So let's just go through really quickly here. So we've got two new plots in nightmare mode. And we have a different card over here. So let me have a look at these quickly. Assassination. When revealed, attach assassination to the hero with the highest threat cost. It counts as a plot attachment with the text. Each enemy gets plus one attack. Attached hero cannot be healed. Damage from undefended attacks and a knife in the back must be assigned to attached hero. If attached hero leaves play, the players lose the game. Unlucky. And rise to power. That's a nasty one. Rise to power contributes X threat to the staging area during the quest phase, where X is the number of resources on it. Force at the end of the round plays two resources on rise to power, so that just continually ramps threats. Discussed in that plot. So let me really quickly do this. Shuffle them, and we'll take one for this game. And then I'll have to put them on the table. I don't think there's a quick way of doing this. And then we get our enemy. Shuffle those back in there. Close it. Okay, I'm going to shuffle the underworld deck as well because I don't trust it. <laughs> and also because there are some disgusting enemies in this in nightmare mode. Okay, so you are playing nightmare mode. Set up shuffle each copy of false accusations into the underworld deck. That's a treachery that raises your threat by five. Spoiler alert. When randomly determining which plot is the hidden plot card, include the two new plot cards in this nightmare deck as well as the three plot cards in the original scenario. Very cool. Forced, after an enemy is destroyed, shuffle it into the Underworld deck if you are not at stage 3. And forced, at the beginning of the refresh phase, if there is a clue card in the staging area, shuffle it back into the Underworld deck. So you can't just leave those clues lying there anymore. You have to uh, pick them up as quickly as possible. Okay, so same setup as before. We make the Force Star the active location. Got exactly the same effect on the quest card, so nothing to worry about there. Starting hand is not good, so I'm going to take a mulligan. Uh, that's quite nice. Decent spread of attachments. Would be nice to see King of Dale, of course, but um, I think one thing to bear in mind for when you play this nightmare mode is that this card under here could be an enemy that makes an immediate attack, so it's nice to get an early game defender as well. So we'll definitely be looking for that. Let's go. Okay, Henemarth, he might make my life easy here. I'm going to play him and have a look at what the first card is. Okay, Underworld Dissidents, so I know we're only going to add three threat, which is useful to know. I will draw two cards. Okay, there's that early game defender, so I need to prioritize him, really. So let's play some attachments. I'll play Bow of You onto Bard, which is enough to cover questing for this turn. Draw a card. Warrior of Dale. Um, I could play this Bow of You and gain two resources, but I don't think it would really get me anywhere. Uh, because I really want to play this guy, so I just need to save up, I think. I'll play the map of Rovanium with Bard's resource. Maybe I should have played that bow onto Brand Son of Bane, actually, because I could kill the Dissident. Let's play that one onto him for free. And I'll draw a card. Okay, another traffic from Dale. It's interesting. So he's now three. So I could actually get the sentry down if I played both of those. I could play one this turn and gain a resource. I think that's worth it. So I'm going to play that now. Uh, I'll add a resource um, to Brand. So I basically gain two because I've got two attachments on Dale characters. So that means I'm going to have three next turn and I can play the Sentry out. I think I'll play the map of Rivanian here as well. Well, I guess I guess I could kill that guy this turn if I just don't quest. Which I don't think is a big deal because I've got Galadrin's greeting. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to quest. Um, he's going to come out. I don't think I get any ill effects from doing that. Um, so I raise my threat by three. Engage him. Shadow card. Please don't discard my hand. Defend with Bard, son of Brand. There are no underworlds out, so he's only attacking for two. Okay, plus two. That's annoying. So he takes two wounds. And then I can do an attack of three plus one direct damage from the bow, which kills him. And actually, because it's Nightmare, he gets shuffled into the Underworld deck because we're not at stage 3. So that's good and bad. One good thing about that is that it thins this out or kind of dilutes the nasty enemies with some weaker ones. 
The bad thing is that um, it means if you kill the nasty enemies, they come back. Basically, they don't go in the encounter discard pile. They go into the underworld deck again. So double-edged sword, you might say. Okay, hasty stroke. That's going to be really important. Let's see what the card is with Hanamarth. City street. So at least two threat and a surge. Kind of annoying. Let's draw two. Okay, King of Dale and Bartering now. Is King of Dale going to help me more than playing Traffic from Dale? I think it will, yes. Uh, because I can gain... Let's see, I could probably get out the Warrior of Dale and the Sentry. Right? I can play this for two. And then I can exhaust it and lower the cost of the next Dale ally I play by two. Uh, or actually, alternatively, what I could do is play this map first onto Bard. <laughs> Always forget their names. Then use it, and I can get this guy for free. Now I can spend three resources on the Defender if I want to, which I think I will. And I'll play the Raymond or Hoberk on him, rather. Draw a card. Get another Hoberk. So I'm fine for attack and defense, I think, now. That's just willpower that's the problem. So I'm going to do six here on the quest, and I'll trigger the map to place a progress on the fourth star. So we know we're getting City Street. Reveal another card. Each player must search the encounter that can just go for one city location. Add to a staging area if able. I'm glad to see that because that's got the disgust and shadow effect on it. Uh, so I'll go for a City Street because it's a surge. So we have four against our six, so we get two progress. And nothing else to do, so refresh. Right, let's see what this card is now and calculate what willpower I need. Okay, a Nightmare card, Faithless Conspirator. If the active location has at least one face-down card underneath it, Faithless Conspirator cannot take damage. So right now he can't take any damage. But because we've got two of these out, that's actually quite a good time to get him. Um, it does mean I have to quest up against eight, though, which is kind of a problem. Let's see if we can get some willpower. Okay, there's the willpower we need. Right on cue. So King of Dale, North Realm Lookout. And we'll go Map of Ravanion on him. I'm going to use Erevor's resource for that. Draw a card. Test of Will, that was a good choice. Uh, now, do I want to gain some resources on somebody? I could gain a lot on Bard Son of Brand with my traffic from Dale. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to gain four. One, two, three, four. Because uh, I have four Dale characters with attachments. And I could play that at this point. But I think I could just wait. Um, I only played the Traffic from Dell because it's one each round. Uh, so you do need to plan in advance with that one. Okay, so there's eight that we need to quest up against. I can quest for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I know I'm getting some kind of enemy coming out. Probably okay with this, I think. So I can hit the active location for two as well. So I'll hit it for one because I'm going to get that last progress now. So we make one progress, four star, resource there, that goes away, Let's see what this is. Okay, murderous turncoat, so this is a guy who's disgusting. When revealed, he makes an immediate attack against the first player, and I can't even cancel it because it wasn't revealed from the encounter deck. So I'm going to have to defend this with my sentry. Nothing, so he's going to take a wound, hits for five, which is quite disgusting as well. And then at the end of the combat phase, place Murderous Turncoat face down underneath the active location if you're not at stage 3. So that means he's coming back, essentially, which is not good. So I'm kind of tempted not to travel at this point and just uh, leave him in play, engage with me. Because if I don't deal with him, he's just going to keep coming back over and over again and he's really difficult to deal with. So I'm going to engage him. I'm not going to travel. I'll let the Conspirator stay up there. Shadow card. Now, I either lose my questing power or I lose my Warrior of Dale. And at this point, I'm kind of tempted on the Warrior, even though he does hit for four, basically. Um, just because I've got eight in the staging area, and that's a lot to get past. So I'm going to block it with him. I don't want to do that, but I think it's probably the... the um, the, the least bad option, I guess. <laughs> and then I can't do any damage to the guy, which is frustrating. So, refresh. At least he doesn't go under the active location, though. Okay, let's see what this card is. Okay, Cabal's Champion. That's a really annoying objective, so it's going to surge. And it gives the villain 
um, plus one threat attack defense and two hit points so if you get three of those on the villain they are really really difficult to kill I'll draw two maybe I get sneak attack okay I got steward that's good so traffic from Dale and I will gain one two three four on brand and then I'll play steward onto bard Now the card I wouldn't mind at this point is the Long Lake Trader, just so I can shuffle, uh, move some of these attachments around. And I wonder if I... I think I might just hard cast Gandalf and kill this guy. Or I could kill that guy. But I'll probably do this one, just because he's so frustrating. I suppose I can barter, at least. So if I barter this map off, or barter a bow... I'll barter a bow of you, just because I want that on him, I think. So I'll do that. And I'll put that there. Just so I can chip an enemy for one. Maybe I can bring this guy down. And then I'll play Gandalf. One, two, three, four, five. And I'll kill him. And in fact, actually, he goes into the Underworld deck. Okay, I'm going to play Unexpected Courage as well, I think, onto Brand Son of Bane so that I can get double use out of his willpower and attack. That looks good. Alright, so there's eight in the staging area plus an unknown number. So I'll quest for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And up by one. I wonder if I should quest with Gandalf as well. I think I probably have to. Well, if my threat goes up from that, I can lower it. So. If I keep Gandalf out, I can actually kill that guy. So I'm going to keep him out. So I'm 9 against 8. This comes out. Surge and Doom 1. Another card. Arch Tunnel. So 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have to go up by 3. 1, 2, 3. Not good. Um, I will travel. Ah, hang on. That's Underworld 1. Let's get that there. Okay, I'm going to travel to one of these. I have to. I've got a choice. Engage this guy. Um, so he can take damage. Defend. If this attack destroys the character, remove all tokens from the current quest. Nuh uh. And then we do four, five, one direct damage, and he's dead, and he goes into the underworld deck. Gandalf leaves play, and nothing else to do, so refresh. Alright, Stuart here. I'm on 40 threat already. Let's have a look at this card. When revealed, reveal one card from the Underworld deck and add it to the staging area. If it's a clue card, discard it instead. I think I'll probably cancel that because I just don't want to get um, the staging area out of hand. Uh, you really need to keep uh, this under control. So I'll probably cancel that one with Bard's resources. Um, I'll draw two. Okay, Will of the West, I need that. Let's keep that over there. I will use King of Dale. Go North Realm Lookout. And I would like to play Faramir next turn, I think, so I'm going to spend one, give him the Hoberk of Mail, which will let me draw a card at least. Another Hoberk, so it replaced itself. Um, that's probably all I'll do, I think, because as soon as I quest here, I'll do 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And we're up against 6. And so as soon as I do that, um, my two maps will trigger, so I place 2 there, so that goes away, and I get a resource token on that one. This card is revealed. I'm going to cancel it because I do not want to keep revealing cards from there. It's a surge though. This quest is full of surge. Sewers. When revealed, place the top card of the underworld deck face then underneath the active location if able. Not for you. Just cancelled that. So that worked out well. So I get three. So we would get three progress. Not that we need it. Okay, I'm going to travel to City Street because I've got no choice goes away and there's nothing else to do at this point so refresh all right let's see this card traitor's den underworld one force at the end of the round place one resource token on traitor's den and then if it has four or more resource tokens on it remove all tokens from it and reveal at random one of the plot cards removed from the game during setup add that card to the staging area that could absolutely nail you if you get a bunch of those out of four player and you can't get rid of them that could be big big problem time. Um, thankfully I don't think that's going to happen here. Um, I think I will lower my threat by 6 with the Galadrim's greeting. 1, 2, 3. So I'll go down to 35. Not 25, you little cheat. There we go. 
and I reckon play Faramir. One, two, three, four, just to keep our willpower numbers going. Uh, that looks really solid at this point. The other thing I might do is play Protector of Lorien onto Brand, just so I can use him to boost willpower if needed. I've got some some cards here I don't really need, like this Dupe of King of Dale. Uh, so we're going to get against three, seven, ten. And I'll quest for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And in fact, actually, I can do it with Brand. So I can do nine plus Faramir's three. And I'll kill the active location as soon as I commit from the maps of Rogvanian. This is revealed, so I get two progress, not that I need it. Get another one on there. Okay, that's an Underworld one as well. Mustn't forget that. It's quite easy to forget when you're using Henmarth Riversong. Uh, I think I'll travel to the sewers. Maybe the maybe the traitor's den actually. That's probably the more important one. Let's get that one out of there. Six progress too. And I don't think there's anything else to do this round, so refresh. Okay, another Galadrim's greeting. Probably play that now. Let's have a look here. Oh, another one of them. That's oh, not good. Nothing you can do about it though, unless you've got some scrying. I, there's no way to move that to the bottom of the encounter deck, unfortunately. I think I'll draw two. Okay, Protector of Lorien. Let's play that on Brand. Uh, Bard, sorry. And I reckon. I reckon maybe just leave it there. I've got a Defender I can bring out. I don't need to play him because there's that enemy that does damage. It looks like I can get through this. So I'm going to play Galadrim's Greeting to lower my threat by six again. Just grab a drink because I'm getting a dry throat here. Okay, getting a stiff arm as well. Too much Lord of the Rings. <laughs> okay, um, right. We've got four seven in there. I reckon I probably need to quest for about 20, 15 to 20 here, just because this needs six progress. Um, so I'll quest for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and I can go up to sixteen. I can chuck away a couple of cards. And I can hit the active for two. I think that looks good to me. So this is revealed Doomed 1. It's a Surge 2. Underworld Dissident. Plus one attack for each Underworld location in play. So it's currently plus three, which is not good. Uh, so that adds three. One, two, three. So I'm currently getting two. One, two. Uh, I think I might leave that there. Uh, I think that should have a resource token on it. Just because if I clear it, I get another card from under here, and I don't know what that is, and I need to deal with this guy really. So I think I'm going to stick rather than twist, because I'll also have to progress and get the plot, uh, which could be a big problem. So I'm just going to stick at this stage, engage this guy, shadow card, defend with my sentry. Yeah, that's a good treachery to get rid of. Then I'll just. Uh, waste him. So he dies and he goes into the underworld deck. Shuffle that. That looks good. New turn. Alright, let's see what we're up against Henemarth. Oh no, the third one. That oh, He's going to be difficult to kill that guy. Well, nothing we can do about it, so it is what it is. Draw two. Okay, there's our third willpower quester. Another bartering as well. Um, I'm going to barter this off of him. And that's going to let me play this map onto him for free. And I'll draw a card. I think that should have had a resource on it at the end of the round. Okay, another defender. I wonder if I should play that guy. I think I probably should, just in case that's the um, when revealed enemy. So I'm going to do King of Dale, Sentry, Hoburk on him. Draw a card. King of Dale, that's nice. And I think I'm okay, so I'll quest for the same I did last time, which I think was 12. And I will trigger one of the maps to hit the active location for one progress, so only one more until it pops. And then this is revealed, goes over there, doomed one. Another card, sewers, okay. Place the top card of the Underworld deck face down underneath the active location if able. I have no cancellation, so I've got to eat this, whatever it is. And that also gets one underneath it. And that adds three. Let's put it under there while we figure this out. Uh, so we're looking at ten in there. 
So we make two progress. I think that's fine. One, two. So that clears the traitor's den. We're going to get our final token on there. I'll resolve these first. Okay, when revealed, each player must either raise his threat by five or exhaust each ready character he controls. I'm going to do the threat. <laughs> I don't really want to. One, two, three, four, five. But if I exhaust all of these guys and that's an enemy, I'm toast. So that goes away. And then flip this one. Oh, nice. That clue's awesome. So um, exhaust the hero to claim it, add it to the victory display, and place two resource tokens on the current quest. Really good time to get that. All right, next stage. So we reveal the set aside plot and add it to the staging area. Up in flames. Same plot as last game. That's kind of boring. Never mind. I'll do a fixed run <laughs> again in the future. I'll, I'll pick the plots to make it interesting. Okay, and then we're going to put Roots of Mindolo in as the active location. Um, I think I'm going to claim this now because there's no enemies in play. Um, so I'll grab that, add it to the victory display, and place two resource tokens on the current quest. So we're halfway there. And then I think we're going to go to the end of the round here. So um, luckily I've got Will of the West, so I'm going to completely counter this plot. So I will place one resource token there and then discard a card and refresh. Okay, Calabrian Stone. Now this is the point where I have to start playing carefully because I really don't want to lose through decking myself. I also would really like some sneak attacks. Um, I haven't used any yet, just trying to remind myself. So I'm going to draw the two. I think though I'll check the card first. Okay, that's going to gain Surge, so kind of annoying. Draw two. Okay, got what I wanted. So I can hit the um, villain for four damage with a sneak attack Gandalf, which is very, very good. I'll probably play Calabrian Stone on Bran, Son of Bane. Just so he goes up to five willpower. Three attack. And he has a bow of you. Uh, this is going to discard two cards, so I have at least another turn. I Now, if this is the... I think I need another turn until I get this villain out as well, because I can clear this up. And then, um, if that's Telemnar's Bane again, I need to account for the three cards. So one, two, three would take me to six, and then one, two off the plot would take me to four. So I'd get another three off Telemnar's Bane. So I will not draw any more cards, I think, is the right play here. Uh, I think I've got a board state that's absolutely fine for what I'm trying to do. And I'm questing up against ten, which I think I'm fine about because I've got Faramir. So I'll quest for 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14. And I can add another 4 with Faramir if I need to. This comes out, gains search, there's no brigands engaged. Sewers, alright. Oh, and I forgot to trigger my map, so let me do that now. So I hit that for 3, 1, 2, 3. Um, place a card underneath that, and it's also Underworld 1. I feel like one of those enemies is coming soon. Okay. So that adds 3 right from that one so I get one progress and I think I'll discard a card to protect of Lorien to get another progress uh, let me just double check I've got the willpower right yep there's three of those so they're nine plus that one is 13 so roots of Mindolin goes away flip this one zealous traitor okay when he engages a player you must deal one damage to each ally you control that's the nasty one <laughs> Progress token there. Now, where do I go is the question. I don't think I want to go to the arch tunnel, so I'm going to go to a sewers. And I'll optionally engage him, so I have to deal one damage to all of my allies, which is annoying because it means I lose Hanamarth. He doesn't die, though, thankfully. Okay, shadow card. I'll defend with the slightly ropier one, I think. Although, if he gets the plus two attack, he would kill him. Uh, no, he wouldn't, actually, because he's four defense so he's only going to do one damage so I defend with this guy if it destroys a character remove all tokens nah sorry mate so we do three and bow of you and he is dead and he goes back into the underworld deck because we're not at stage three yet that looks like the end of the round so I'll place one there and discard the top two one two there's a trader and a Gandalf all right Drew a long lake trader, that's good. I'm gonna play him. Let's get another body down. And I don't think I need to do anything else. Um, I do want to play Will of the West before we progress through, just in case we get the um, Telemnar's Bane villain again, I think. So I will quest for the same as before. Um, 8, 9, 10, 11, 14. 
and I believe I'm cresting against 10. Yep, 10 in staging area. Now I can absolutely brutalize the sewers with my maps. I think I'll do two though, just so I don't get this card. It could be that enemy that does the immediate attack. So I'm gonna put two on it and I've got four threat leeway. So reveal a card. Local trouble, okay, that's gonna go on one of my heroes. Um, I'm gonna put that on Berivor. I have no cancel, so I can't stop it. Um, it's way better to put that on her than Brand Son of Bane. No threat there, so I get four progress. One, two, three, four. So this clears the sewers. Flip that one. Faithless Conspirator is fine, I think. Although I am 40 threat, so he's going to engage me. Token there, and then we'll go to the final stage. When reveal, reveal the set aside villain card and add it to the staging area. It's the same guy. How did this happen? <laughs> Oh well. Uh, flip that. So shuffle the underworld deck into the encounter deck. That's weird. I feel like I didn't do it properly or something. I definitely shuffled them, didn't I? I'll have to check the VOD before I release it. Okay, I'm going to shuffle that just to be sure. All right, where do we go now? That's the question because this guy is powered up to the maximum and I need to play my Will of the West before he engages me. Otherwise, I lose. Um, I think... While I've got a chance, what I might do at the end of the quest phase is sneak attack Gandalf and actually kill that conspirator just because there's no active location. So that takes him out of the equation. And then I'll bring Gandalf back to hand and play him next turn to put some damage on this guy. I think I'm going to travel to the sewers. And then I'll play my Will of the West. Is there anything I want to discard here? I think I could probably do a bartering just to draw a card. So if I barter this Hoburg, I can replay it for free. Okay, Glea Wine, that was, that was worth it, I think. Um, then I may as well discard these two just so there are more cards in my deck, I think. I don't, what's this guy attacking for? He's three, four, five, six. So let's figure out what his stats are. Plus one to everything and plus two. So he's six threat. Pretty disgusting. Six attack and four defense. And seven, nine, eleven. <laughs> Thirteen health. What? How can I calculate that? I'll just do that there. There we go. That's his health. Man, that's a lot of health. Okay, so I'll play that then. I don't think I'll bother discarding those King of Dales and shuffle those into my deck. All right, so he engages me. Uh, ah, after a player plays an event guard, Telemnar's Bane makes an immediate attack against the first player, so presumably he can do that from anywhere, actually. Uh, so let's play it that way. So he makes an immediate attack from the staging area. Discard top three. One, two, three. Um, I'll defend with this guy. Oh, he's hitting for six, actually, so he's going to die. I'm going to defend with this sentry instead. All right, that's a good card to get rid of. Um, so he's going to do two damage. And I have to engage him. Shadow card. Uh, in fact, actually, he would have done. He would have done another attack, I think, when I sneak attack Gandalf. So I wonder if I could have played that differently. I think. I don't think there would have been a window, actually, to do that. So let me think that one through a second. If I played Sneak Attack Gandalf while he was in play, he would have done an attack and discarded the top three cards of my deck. So I did have eight cards in there, I think. So let's take another attack from him, to be fair. Um, I will take it on my trader. Okay, so I discard top three. One, two, three. I think this is right. So now he's going to do another attack, basically. So he's absolutely brutalizing me. Um, I think I'm going to have to say goodbye to this sentry. So he does another one. One, two, three. Return attack and range the stage and after attacks. Uh, no. If that happens, I lose, I think. So he's going to have to stay engaged with me. Now then, I need to put as much damage on him as possible. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five. Raise my threat by one. Six, seven, eight. And I've got two bows of you. So I'll do two direct damage. And that puts two and then another four. One, two, three, four. So I think we're halfway there. I'm going to take his threat away just so we can see what those tokens are. All right, then the end of the round, I think I can survive this, I hope. So I discard three. One, two, three. 
and the next turn. Here we go. Let's see what we draw. Hanamarth. Okay. So Bear of All Ready, so that's another threat. Steward of Gondor here. I don't think it's going to help me though. Uh, let's go King of Dale, and we'll play the Sentry and the Hoburk of Mail. Now he's going to do at least one attack on me this turn, which means he'll discard another three. And if he does another one, he discards another three. So the question is, can I survive another two rounds? No, I don't think so. So I'm not going to draw any more cards. I'm just going to play with what I've got. Gleowine for two. And I'll play this guy. So, you know, maybe I shouldn't have chumped with that guy last turn because now I have no attachments to put on him. Um, I wonder if there are any traders left in my deck. There's two in there, so there's one in my deck somewhere, but I don't think I want to risk losing for the sake of that. So I think I'm going to hard cast Gandalf and hit this guy for four damage. And I'll do it with Bra a bard, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'll play Hanamar for one. Now I wonder if it's worth using his scrying ability or he can quest for two. I think he's probably better questing for two at this point. Um, although I could figure out exactly what I need. I'm going to do it. Okay, that's useful to know that he's coming out because he's going to kill half my board. So I probably need to make a mad dash for the end here. Uh, let's have a think. Two, six, nine in staging. So there's three there. And I can clear that with my maps, and I need 15 to win. So I need to put 18 down. Well, there's 9 out there, which means I need to quest for a lot, like 27, which is pretty ridiculous. Let's do 3, 4, 5, 6, and we'll hit that for 2. 7, 8. 9, 10. 13, 18, and I'll discard two cards to get up to 20. So that puts me up by 11, so I get 1 and 10 on there. And then if I have Faramir, I think I would get another 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, which would give me the exact amount, right? So he comes out, I get 11 progress. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yeah. Plus my Faramir gives me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I've done that. Now I just need to kill the villain. This goes away. Flip this one. Who knew it was going to be that guy? One revealed murderous turn count makes an immediate attack against the first player. Well, I'm going to lose these guys anyway, so... I may as well chump. Okay, so that goes away, and I will probably take that map back with Bard's ability. There's no reason not to, I think. And then he will engage. I'll option engage him so that I only take one damage on my allies. So I lose my sentry in the encounter phase. So that means I can bring back the Hoburk if I want to, or I can bring back my bow. Um, I'll probably take back the bow, I think. It's probably more useful. Uh, so I'll take that back to hand. He takes a damage. Hennemarth dies. These two take a damage. Gandalf takes a damage. He takes damage. Faramir takes a damage. And then I have to engage this idiot as well. Probably going to lose a hero here, I think, because I just all I need to do is kill this. So I need to do seven damage. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. So yeah, if I let that guy undefended, I think I win. <laughs> I don't want to do that, but blech. Okay, let's defend Telemnar's Bane first. Um, I don't think I played any events. Uh, I sincerely hope I didn't anyway. Uh, so let's defend here. He's attacking for six. No shadow, so he takes two, so he survives. And then I think I'm going to do my turn coat. Yep, so he kills the sentry. Lose the armor, right? Uh, combat phase, actually, so I can take it back to hand. And then we take this guy undefended. Cool. Don't lose a hero. One, two, three. And then I just do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One direct damage. 
One, two, three, and I hope that's a legit win because he's got 14 damage on him. So I kill the villain, and I think I win the game. I hope so. That was close, though. I think I need to discard top three cards in my deck, actually, as well. So I would have had one more turn to kill him because that would have discarded four. Uh, maybe if I could have damaged him somehow before he discarded my deck, but whatever. All right, well, uh, I hope you enjoyed that video, and I enjoyed playing that. I've got to say, this is a really good quest, and Dale's a really good fit for it. You see, I got absolutely smashed there, but I managed to survive through to the end. So I think if the game had gone any longer, I would have been brutalized. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you think about the quest, and good luck with your own attempts at following Elrond's orders. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.